The illustrious Jabba bids you welcome. <laughs> I'm going to regret this. I'm Pete Mitchell. He's Peyton Jones. And this is the Church Planner Podcast. Brought to you by Church Planner Magazine. Hey, Church Planner, this is Pete Mitchell. And this is Peyton Jones. And, uh, you know, I think actually last week, I think last week was episode 210 or maybe this week's 210, 211. I don't know, but I went back and listened just to see how the car cast <laughs> sounded. Guys, I apologize. I didn't realize, like, my sound was terrible. Well, part of it was just because it's you. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. Hey, but I just want to say if ever I have to do a one-man podcast, you know, I'm just saying I can hold it. I can hold it. <laughs> I did. I did slightly edit your uh, when I was gone, and you're like, "Oh, okay, guys, it's just me here. Uh, let me talk to you about MoGive." And, uh, and I actually did go through there and slightly edit a few key places here and there. That inappropriate things? Not inappropriate. You're never inappropriate. I'm the one that has to be edited for being inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I probably said something about MoGive that you know. I said something like, hey, I've done this a uh, million times as commercial, but do it in my sleep. But that's not what your sponsor wants to hear. Well, and, you know, ironically, I haven't reached out to our, our new uh, contact there at MoGiv. But uh, what I did do is I charged their credit card. And I figured, hey, we'll see if they say no. <laughs> <laughs> So on that note, we better do our MoGive commercial since we are charging their credit card. I'm like, hey, whoever pays the bills there has seen this charge every month for like two years. They won't wreck it. hear it now in the accounting. Johnson, what's this unauthorized charge coming out? It's Church Planner Magazine. Well, well, that's the thing is it doesn't even show up as Church Planner Magazine. It shows up as Profit Hacking Solutions. I mean, they're probably like, (laughs) what in the world is this? That's and, not what you want to appear on your statement as a giving <laughs> portal, especially for charities. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, so, hey, you know what? I do have a question for you. If I was starting a church plant and I wanted to give people a way that they could give online, maybe on a regular basis, uh, do you have any suggestions on what they could use to collect it? You know, PayPal or something like that? What do you use? Oh, I would totally use MoGive. What? MoGive.com. Yeah, uh, Pete, MoGive is a cheap and easy online giving system uh, for today's new and growing churches. What? Tell me more of this magical place. Well, you can go to MoGive.com forward slash church and uh, tell them that Pete and Peyton sent you. And how would I spell MoGive? Oh, well, that's a good question. It's M-O-G-I-V, Pete, not M-O-G-I-V-E. M O G I V dot com. Dude, remember, I got to tell you something, man. All right, so I was talking with this guy who's uh, who's going to be coming through my my consulting program for church planners. Give him a, a great Bivo uh, career. Uh, shameless plug there for myself. And he's a lawyer on the East Coast, and it was so funny, man, because we're we're talking, and I thought he was a lawyer because his email address had like dot law in it right it was like dot law at gmail.com so whatever his name dot law and um and he goes uh yeah you know uh, i'm an attorney by trade and the first thing out of my mouth is it's not your fault (laughs) (laughs) and he just started laughing and i was like okay good because that just came out like it just slipped right out of my mouth but interestingly enough he does bylaws and stuff for churches and he goes, and just so you know, I have them all sign up for MoGiv. <laughs> like, true story. That's Are what he you said. Serious? Yeah. He goes, every time I'm doing bylaws, I tell him, all right, you need to get signed up for MoGiv. Oh, man. So, but we don't get credit for that, huh? Well, I, I don't think we really get credit for anything we do. <laughs> I mean, that would be awesome because uh, they, they, 
I, no joke now. Every time someone signs up for MoGiv, an angel gets its wings. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> he would, you know, I remember uh, at the beginning, he was like, hey, man, give me a give me a charity of your choice or somewhere you want. And he would give a little tip for everyone who signed up. I'm just saying. Ah, oh, boy, are my dogs barking. Hey, that's a weekly occurrence now. It is. It is because I, I don't know. I didn't bother to lock him up. But uh, and the other thing is, and he goes, and I also try and get him to sign up for Simplify Church. He goes, that one's a little bit harder, you know, because it's just not for every uh, church and blah, blah, blah. But I was why, like, dude. Why do I not know this guy? Because he he has superpowers. Man. Oh, dude, he, he, he totally. To that. We need to know. Him. Oh, oh, best story ever. I literally jumped up in my chair. Best story <laughs> ever. So, okay. You literally jumped, like, literally, you rose in the air about a foot and a half. If you had seen that, Pete literally shot up in his chair. This <laughs> Oh, and, and by the way, he said, he goes, look, if you guys know churches that need help with their bylaws, man, I'll, I'll help them because he's a lawyer and his heart's with church planning. That is awesome. So coolest story ever or craziest story ever. So he's he's uh, I, I don't know that even discipling is the right term for this because the guy I don't believe is a Christian yet. So it's like, you know, he's walking this guy down the path uh, to finding Christ. But. He's he's a Masonic Jew, and so he's uh, um, he works with a lot of uh, uh, you know Jewish congregations. You, you meant Messianic Jew, not Masonic. Like he's not a Freemason. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. You're so right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm such he's an a Masonic. Idiot. He's a Masonic Jew. So so mode it be shalom, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I'm such an idiot. I. I think I have to cut that out, even though it's hilarious. I think I have to cut it out. <laughs> it was too good to cut. You got to keep that. So he's a messianic Jew, and he works a lot with messianic congregations. <laughs> so this guy approaches him because he wants to convert to Judaism. The guy who wants to convert to Judaism that he's like, you know, meeting with weekly. Is, are you ready for this? An African American man who's gay and he wanted to convert to Judaism. Is that not like the greatest story ever? That is awesome, dude. I mean, he's like the whole package. He's, 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 I, I'm a little bit of everything. On I top of it, three with one blow. On top of it, when he was in high school, he was the president of the Young Republicans. What? A dude, I'm like, how is this not like, I've never heard this story before. This is the greatest this is thing amazing. ever. Dude, and he just meets with them every week, and he's like, he's walking them down the path to, to Jesus. And That is so cool, man. The reason why it happened is, um, I'm, I'm going to butcher this part, but um, I believe the guy, he, he was 10 years as a, in, in Catholicism. And, um, so he's basically like tried out a bunch of different religions. And so I think it was his partner. His partner was like, well, you know, you kind of have this whole Catholicism background. Maybe you should try out that, uh, not messianic, but no, wait, no messianic, not Masonic. <laughs> so now I'm just going to murder him. <laughs> Kingdom of the Colts by Pete Mitchell. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. If you're a first time listener of the podcast, we've so lost you. We haven't even got to the good stuff yet. No, and his, his partner was like, you know, I think you ought to go go talk to, you know, the, the guy who's a pastor down there at that church. And so that's how he got introduced to the guy. But is no that way. not like the greatest story ever of, Heck yeah. so who are you leading to Christ right now? <laughs> Let me tell you. I was like, wow. dude, I've, I've never even heard of a story like this. It's like, I, I was, I thought it was the greatest story ever, obviously. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah. That is pretty dang cool. Well, hey, two other things that we got to do before we actually get into our topic. But uh, before we get into those, why don't you tell everyone what the topic is so they know if they should stick around? Well, so we're starting this uh, series on the gifts. And yes, we are going to get to spiritual gifts. But before we do that, what we want to talk about is kind of laying the foundation because, uh, you know, before uh, we get to the actual gifts being activated in the lives of the believer, we need to talk about the equipping gifts 
that the Holy Spirit left behind. And of course, those are found in, in Ephesians 4. So we're doing a mini series on that, unpacking some of the core principles that I talked about in Church Zero. Cha-ching! Because we haven't done that in a long time. Cool. I dig it. So that's what you guys have to look forward to. But until we get then to, uh, there, we had a review on the Ooh. old Church Planner podcast. Oh, nice. oh, this is a good one. Wisdom from the IP man and honey badger of church planting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this this review was given to us by Officer Stoner. That's literally the name that shows up, Officer Stoner. So no clearly someone from Colorado. Or or maybe a chaplain. <laughs> just I, just, I just, saying. I just thought I'd leave that hanging out there. we knew Don Stoner. Which is. our church plant. Yeah, yeah. And he was such a pothead too. No, I'm just kidding. He was actually like, he he was. The, what did he even invent? Like the CD player or something like that. Like one of the the smartest people. Yeah, he, he helped invent compact discs. He, he, he wrote was, a book a on mad, on uh, the theory of relativity. Yeah, I mean, he's, crazy he's kind smart. of a mega brain. Yeah. So anyway, here's here's the review. Pete and Peyton are a witty duo, duo bringing timeless fables from their lives to diehard community of listeners who contemplate the warrior ethos of church planning. Pete and Peyton feed off of each other, producing serious humor, humorous, thought-provoking information from their experience in Christian ministry. Peyton conveys the essence of the IP man, someone seasoned with the rigorous trials and triumphs of being in Christian ministry, bringing a calmness to the midst of the storm, restraint to the human element that would viciously attack a stubble head nod when you raise your hands in victory. Pete excludes the presence of of the honey badger, <laughs> fierce and headstrong, the perfect wingman when ministry hits the fan, free of uh, free of showboating, he is refreshing as he communicates the honesty that would come to light in particular human slash gospel situations. That sounds horrible, or I wouldn't do that. I'll say it here. Uh, if you don't want to hear rich wisdom, solid teaching points, uh, laughter. And leave with a joyful spirit. This isn't the podcast for you. So, Officer Stoner, we salute you. We appreciate that. And as always, we have free gifts, free swag for you. If you leave us a review for either the Church Planner Podcast or Church Planner Magazine on Stitcher or iTunes or anything like that, all you got to do is tap the little gear uh, icon in the bottom of your Church Planner Magazine app. And it's going to take you to a screen. It's going to say, contact us here. You tap that. It sends us an email with what's called your device token on it. And we are able to unlock some of those paid issues that are in your uh, Church Planner Magazine app. So if you want to do that for us, we will be happy to do that for you. So Officer Stoner, thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man, for that uh, review. We always get a kick out of those. And uh, we read them. Pete always sends them to me. And uh, we we laugh about them. So, man, we we appreciate you taking the time to do that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And we also had a, a little thing called uh, the Church Planner Library going on in what? which we were giving away, I believe it was like a dozen uh, church planning books. Um, winner, winner, chicken dinner. The one that everybody was hoping to get is Church Zero, of course. Cha-ching. Oh, yeah, cha-ching. So uh, our three winners, as promised, we would announce it on today's show. So the first winner is. Um, we have sound effects. No, you know I haven't loaded any of my sound effects Come in. Come on, you need a drum roll, man. I'm sorry, you got to stall for a second. I got to check something. All right. Um, let's see. My favorite uh, sound bite. Is <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> are we? Are we? We're not going to call people today, like. No, like we did. No. Oh, dude. Okay, this is someone who who confirmed his uh, his subscription, so he's in. His oh. name, I and I only, by the way, I only have uh, an email address and a first name for some of these people. Real, real quick, Pete, before you do this, um, remind everyone what they needed to do to win this. They had to go to churchplanerlibrary dot com and enter their email. That's it. That's all they had to do. Okay. And not hit unsubscribe and mark me as spam. By the way, do you guys understand that when you do that, it actually hurts me? Like they will stop sending my email when you mark spam because you entered my contest. We actually yeah, had a bunch you, of You actually do that. gave us your email with a disclaimer that we would send you something. 
That's that's how this works. Yeah. So when they when people mark me as spam, I literally delete them out and ban them. <laughs> I'm like, dude, oh, nice. you just hurt my company. You hurt my business because you entered this and then five minutes later didn't remember you did. So uh, the first winner is a guy by the name of Aaron. It's Aaron dot Soma S O W M A. I don't know if it's Soma or. Anyway, so we're going to be emailing you, and I'm not going to say the rest of the email, so that way we're not giving out his email address there on the old uh, on the old interwebs. But uh, but yeah, hey, congratulations, you won one of those sets. Oh, dude, this next winner, check this out. This is someone from Australia. Oh, nice. Yeah, John Paul, and the first part of his email is J O N A I R I E N. So. Uh, uh, John Paul, you are a winner as well. And let's see who is our third winner. Survey says uh, we have to redraw. You know why? Um, he marked it as spam. So we can't even notify him that he won. So we are have to you redraw. kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. Oh, my gosh. So he marked us as spam. <laughs> he marked us as spam. So he's out. Well, you could have won something. You, you dummy. You, well, yep. So you're out. And let's see. I'm going to check this guy. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's make sure, uh, this guy's good. I really should have done this beforehand, but I didn't know if we were going to like be all funny when we drew their names or not. Oh, this guy did the same thing. He marked it as spam. So he's out. He's not winning either. <laughs> Guys, this you understand if you mark fun. it as spam, there's literally no way I can tell you, you won the contest. It, yeah, I can't this do is it. It's kind of fun. You got to admit that this is, this is kind of like people marking us as spam. Oh, you didn't win. <laughs> This is a fun game within itself. Dude, I'm why did you enter contest. the contest if you're just going to say, oh, it's spam? Don't tell me if I... Oh, okay, all right. We got a winner. All right, winner, winner, chicken dinner. First of all, I can't possibly pronounce the name. <laughs> uh, the name is Tatang. You did not. I th that's what it says. That's what it says. <laughs> it's what it says. T-A-T-A-N-G. Tatang. How else do you say that? How else? Why are <laughs> Peyton is like muting himself right now <laughs> and just hanging his head in shame. Yeah, I'm just saying that's what the dude's name is. I don't know if I could be on this podcast anymore. <laughs> that's his name. How is this my fault? How is this my fault? Congratulations to Tang. And his email is T my U S U F 30. And I'm not going to say the rest of it. So if that's your email beginning, you know, you're one of okay. the winners, but uh, are you sure he's not spam? It went through. He actually confirmed his email address, meaning he well, hit okay. the, yeah, I'm, I'm double opting in. So yeah, Cause it, that sounds like one of those emails I get that is spam. Yeah, no, that what's no really cool. Tang. Thanks for playing. Yeah, what's really cool is he entered on uh twelve twenty two, so it was a little bit right before Christmas. Yeah. Well, Merry Christmas to you, Tatang. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so anyway, those are those are our winners, man. I'm I'm So you get what uh, how many books did it turn out to be? Twelve. Each of these so guys 12 won twelve books made from real live trees. That will be mailed to you. These are not ebooks. These are these are like holding your hand, sniff the glue out of them. Books. Yeah. So that's that. That is not an endorsement of glue sniffing. By the way, that all I know is I don't know how I'm going to mail twelve books to Australia now. This is like going to cost me so much money. I I thought last time we limited it to within the United States, dude. I, I'm not. If someone wants to come to me from Australia, I'm I'm down. I'm thinking yeah. what I might have to do is just buy the books on uh, Amazon.com.au and just have them, yeah, shipped directly. Well, that to means them. that we got another. I know we, we got another sitting around. We got another set of books that we can give away. Can we pick another winner. No, I can't because I only set it up for three winners, so it it actually it, it won't let me pick another one, which is kind of good because actually the the copy of Church Zero I was going to give away I, one of them. It's a little dog-eared. I mean, it, it might be pre-read. I'm just I'm going to throw that out there. It might be pre-read. But uh, but anyway, we should actually get on with the uh, the topic at hand yeah. now that now that okay. I've cool uh, offended Peyton. 
Yeah. With, so with hey, and it's easily done, Pete. As you know, you easily offend many people on this podcast. So we just know that you're doing your job. That's all. That's Man. what you're here for. I'm I'm here to offend as much as I can. You've offended the Messianics, the Masons, Dude, the Tangs. That is so funny. The 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 Masonic. He's a Masonic Jew. Oh my gosh, dude! What a screw up that is. Shalom, so mote it be. That is just <laughs> classic, man. So, <laughs> so uh, okay. Well, guys, um, welcome to the the part of the show where we actually talk about church planning now. Um, so, we, you know, we've been doing this series, and you know, we're we're leading into. So, we're going to be kind of following on the podcast a bit of a, a trajectory here. Now, I have a book coming out in May. You can go online, pre-order it now. It's called, uh, what's it called again? Reaching the Unreached, Becoming Raiders of a Lost Art. And it really kind of unpacks Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And it's more about mobilizing the everyday believers. So when I wrote Church Zero, cha-ching, it was about those five equipping gifts that Jesus left behind to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So it was really about those five roles working together as a team to plant churches. But the next book is really about the point of uh, that whole passage, and that is to equip the saints. So reaching the unreached, really, if you're a pastor or a church planner, um, it's really a book that answers the central question that every uh, minister has, and that is how do I motivate my people for mission? And that's the apostolic job. And so today's topic is now that we, for two weeks now, we've talked about those teams, those five roles as teams. We've kind of done a, a drive-by cursory um, mention of each of the roles, but now we're going to take them apart week by week and look at what is an apostle and what does it mean and um, how do you know you are one. And so I'm going to say things today that that you may have heard me say before, but I think we're going to hit a different approach to this so that you probably, it probably isn't something that you've completely heard before. What I want to talk about is the apostolic guy. So the word in the Greek literally means sent out one. It means to be a missionary. And often we were talking about this on Band of Brothers today. Um, We have a, a course called Jump School where we train you for a year. And um, it, it's basically jump school course is to train you as a church planner. Um, but one of the things that we, <laughs> <coughs> sorry, bear with me. I got a cold season to mute when Pete's talking or hard to mute when I'm talking. But, uh, but basically what we've got is um, on that course, we've got a, a call in. And today the question that we were answering was um, how do these roles fit together And we talked about the fact that the apostolic, um, if you look at that list in Ephesians 4, apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, and teacher, what many people don't realize is that list is actually um, sequential. It's not hierarchical. Uh, One of the things that we have to be really careful for people to know is that we're not talking about... um, the apostle is more important than the prophet. The prophet is more important than the evangelist. And each one is, you know, kind of like a, a hierarchy that has rank over the others. Apostle just, look, each of these five gifts just means how you're wired as an elder in a church. How your, um, what your bent's going to be, what your posture, what your, the things you're going to think about, the things that keep you awake at night. And so for an apostle, he's a sent one. That means a missionary. And so the apostle, if he's if he's an equipping gift, and let's just back up and look, you know, it says when Jesus ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. So he kicked down these equipping gifts to equip the saints, so they're equipping gifts. So the apostle, the way he equips the saints is he takes them on mission. He goes into a church plant, and what he's really doing when he church plants is he isn't saying, hey, Bob, uh, Mary, um, you guys handle the coffee making, and you stand at the door and greet, and I'm going to do all the mission. That's how we've made it, but that's not what it is. That's not what it is biblically. 
It wasn't what it is in the first century. It's definitely not what happens during times of the spirit movement and revival. What it means is the the apostle motivates everybody to get out on mission. And so that's why, you know, when he says, um, even in, in the passage in Corinthians, he says, for God has called first the apostle, then the prophet. That's sequential. That's a time order. And the same in Ephesians chapter four. What we're really talking about is a sequence of how a church really develops. So you see the apostles, they're usually the lead person in a church planning team because they're the frontline missionary. They're the pioneers. They're all about expanding the kingdom of God outward. They're not insular. They don't build the kingdom upward, you know, or the church upwards. They spread the church outward. And so because of that, the apostle thinks like a missionary and he pulls the missionary spirit that's in every believer out of them and helps take Christians who normally wouldn't be mobilized for mission apart from his gifting and he mobilizes them to mission. So in, in many ways, um, the apostles needed very much at the front. And so when I would go plant at, <laughs> so sorry, man, when I would plant at refuge long beach, Pete, you remember this? I, I, I came in and, um, I told everybody cause at the beginning, you're really impressive when you're going, cause you have so much faith and, you, you've got this zeal and this, this, you make it sound like the impossible is possible. And that's part of your gifting. God's given you faith. It's not that you're crazy and other people that are crazy listen to you. It's that you've been given this gifting by God to have this bold faith that's contagious. And people scratch your head and go, I don't know if this guy's nuts, but I'm inspired when I listen to him. And so I would tell people, look, I'm going to see him. Like, I would just tell him up front. I, I didn't hold anything back from Refuge Long Beach. I told him I wasn't going to be there long. I told him that, uh, uh, you know, it was going to be blood, sweat, and tears. I told him all the stuff you don't tell people. But I did tell him, look, guys, I'm not your Jesus. I'm one piece of what Jesus was. I'm, I'm one of the five gifts. And I taught him team leadership up front. And then I said, look, um, I'm going to look really impressive in the beginning stages of this. But I have a sell by date. At a certain point, I'm not going to be like you're, you're going to start looking at me going, oh, gosh, he's not a very good pastor because I'm not. Or, you know what? Um, I really want to go deeper into the word of God and you need a teacher for that. Or, you know, I'm an apostle. I'm going to. Get a bunch of people engaging a community frontline and making an impact crater in that neighborhood. And we're going to plant a church as people get saved. And we're going to grow not by attracting Christians, but by conversions, conversion growth, and uh, rather than transfer growth. And so that was my role. Um, you know, and, and so really, I mean, to use a really bad analogy, it's kind of like Casey and the Sunshine Band, you know? You ever seen Casey and the Sunshine Band, Pete? I have no idea. Shake, 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 shake your booty. Well, I know what Casey and the Sunshine Band is. Okay, all right. All right. So, uh, you know, I could, you know, do a little dance, one on on make it a little love. Did it, did it. Can I say that? I don't- Get down at the night. The train's drowning out. That's That's probably <laughs> providential. <laughs> but, but you know Casey and the Sunshine Band you know uh, he was this white dude and an all black like disco funk band and he'd come out man I have the album I have the album to prove it but he'd come out and he'd have his his little cape on his big giant glasses on remember do you remember like and I said I don't I know what they sing I don't know that I've seen them so, so he, he would come out and they'd, they'd be like a full horn section and it was a funky band and KC, you know, it was KC and the sunshine band, but KC was just a funky little white boy without that band, man. It, he was not, you would not want to see KC do a solo. You would not want to see KC without the sunshine band. It was KC and the sunshine band because the band is what made it work. And so for the apostle, it, it's really, it's not about him. And I think apostles have this kind of hardwired into them. 
where there, you know, that's why Paul, who's an apostle, goes, if the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? <laughs> he does say that. But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. If they were all one member, what would the body be? But now we are many members, yet one body. And and so what's cool is there's this diversity even in the body itself, but the same with these gifts. You you need each other. I mean, to use a a, a Star Wars, um, you know, uh, analogy as well. You need Luke, Chewbacca, Yoda, Ben, Han, and Leia, right? Kermit. You wouldn't watch a show just about Kermit. You need the the Muppets, right? Bono's never done a solo album because you need Larry Mullen, The Edge, and Adam Clayton. So, you pretty much just need The Edge. That's all I'm saying. Well, no, my wife did say recently, I said, hey, we're going to go see the Joshua Tree concert. And she goes, where the edge goes, I go. It's kind of <laughs> like Matthew McConaughey. She'd follow that man to the I, end. I the would end. worry about that. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm a little threatened. I'm not sure if we're going to go see you two. Yeah. You know, just for that reason. She might, you know, she might rattle and hum. You know, she might want to go where the streets have no name. So, but but my point is. In all of these walks of life, it's the same with a star player on a team. Um, that star player is good for one part of the game, right? He's good for one thing, but he's not the team. And so the apostle has to, I think, to be a good apostle, Jesus has to break you. And and he has to break you of, of, of stardom. He did that with Paul. Now Paul says, when I was getting a little conceited, um, there was given a thorn in my flesh to humble me, to show me that I need God's grace. And, you know, I'm nothing in my weakness. God is made strong. And I think many people that um, want to go in and be the church planner, um, they want to be the frontline apostle. Um, it it sounds glorious. I mean, you read the stories years ago, at Mark Driscoll or, you know, other church planners or church sprung up and you go, yeah, that's what I want. And then it's blood, sweat, and tears, right? It's it's like this slow defeat, this breaking process that that Jesus starts working in your life because you have to leave and you have to not uh, because you're leaving as the apostle, you have to not fall in love with people loving you. Mm. You have to be willing to say. It's not about me, and I don't need this. Um, between every church plan, I get out of ministry, and it's it's been so healthy. So if you listen to this podcast and you go, why do they do the smack talk? And why, why do they do? Well, part of it is because Pete and I are friends, and we just make each other laugh. <laughs> and but, and honestly, we care more about having fun than, you know. <laughs> we kind of do, because we know that our show, I mean, our show's got a pretty good size audience, but... We we know that there's people that come on and go, oh no, <laughs> you know, not that no, you know, I'm not listening. I to talked this. to a church planner this last week, who was again thinking about coming through my uh, uh, training, uh, teaching them how to become a business consultant for Bible church planners, and he goes, yeah, I got to be honest, I really like hardcore church planning better, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, you're not going to make it as a business consultant. <laughs> <laughs> if you can make it past the outer crunchy shell, you get into the the gooey sweet center of this podcast. You know, it's like a Tootsie Roll pop. So, you know, basically the the deal is is when you um w- when you're going to move on, you have to really take that stance of John the Baptist, who you know he lifts up Jesus. Don't look at me, Peter, and Acts. Men of Israel, why do you stand looking at us as if by our own power or godliness we do these things? I think one of the things an apostle has the ability to do is to be very real because you're you're not around church people all the time. You're around a lot of non-believers, and that breaking process gets you over that pharisaical, I have to pretend I'm perfect or fake it till I make it. You become very comfortable with your weakness, and that endears you to non-believers because you're going to be trafficking with lost people. That's that's the the your core job is to like Paul set up tent in the marketplace, get around other people. You've got to do that well, and and it's so attractive and so unexpected for a non-believer to come across a Christian who 
just as real, mature spiritually, but very comfortable with being human and not being Jesus. And, and when you realize, like, through my weakness, God is made strong, through my humility, through my brokenness. And, and, and so you're talking to a non-believer and they make a joke or an inappropriate thing. And, you know, you don't just give them a steely glare. You know, I, I'll, I'll still, someone will make a joke that's totally inappropriate. And I can't deny, I still think it's funny and I might crack a smile or I might even, <laughs> you know, and, and people are like, huh, he's human, you know, um, and, and I'm not saying you got to laugh at it, 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 dirty joke. There are times I'm offended and I'm just quiet. You know, I, I just, you know, but, but my point is, um, you have to be very, um, comfortable with being real. And the spirit works through that. It's kind of your bridge to non-believers. And yet you also have to be walking with Jesus to be effective. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to be the cool Christian and be real and, you know, this and that. And if I'm groovy and drink beers with people, um, they'll come to Jesus. You're wrong. Um, if being cool were the secret to winning people to Jesus, first off, most of you listening would never win us all. But secondly, um, the reality is that uh, Paul would have talked about being cool. And he actually mentioned that I wasn't cool. You know, he talks to the, to the Corinthians. There were some slick characters there that were trying to get a following. And Paul calls them super apostles mockingly. But he goes, but when I was with you, I wasn't like that. He goes, don't you remember? You know, I, I came and I worked with my hands. Like I didn't put myself above you in any way. You, you, you almost felt sorry for me at times. And he actually mentions to him, he says that when I was with you, I was in weakness and fear and trembling, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. And that's what it means to walk with Jesus, that, that the power of God is in you. And the, 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 uh, the weaknesses don't become liabilities. They actually, when the power of God is in you, it, it, you just become comfortable. It's the real deal. So you're like, hey, I don't need to to pretend to be this or I don't need to have people like me. If I do my job well as an apostle, um, they are going to uh, fall in love with Jesus. And so what the apostle does, um, there's a few things. Number one, the apostle is really good at, I. okay, so I talked about the fact he can reach lost people. Um, apostles do a few things. Number one, they recruit people. They're always recruiting people to the cause, always recruiting, just like Paul picks up Timothy and all those guys. Another thing they do is they create community. So um, I can go into a place. I can find people's hobbies or see strategic ends. It's kind of like Paul is an entrepreneur. I mean, uh, Peter, Pete is an entrepreneur. Pete can look at the market and enter the conversation people are having. Right, Pete? I mean, you're just like, you and I talk all the time. You're like, there's money there. And, and you're talking like, I'm not a guy who makes money. We don't make any money off this, but Pete, Pete just, cause we're friends. He'll tell me about his business, um, experiences and Pete's always spotting that's money. That's money. That's money. Like he knows he can see the strategic ends and most entrepreneurs can do that. We, we, we call that strategery. <laughs> <laughs> What is that from? That's so no funny. Idea. I remember that. <laughs> strategery. And, uh, That's what I got. <laughs> strategery. And um, and what um, what Paul does because remember he was an entrepreneur in Ephesians. Paul mentions um, making the most of every opportunity, and that word literally means to buy up all the bargains, right? So as Paul's a tent maker, he'd be buying materials, knowing he could sell it for this much. So he's he's spotting. You know, the, 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 the supply and demand, you know, the, the place of, of profitability. And he uses that same term for the gospel. And so Paul had learned to, um, in his gifting, make that connection between what he did to, to, you know, what he was paid for and what he was made for. What he was made for was to be an apostle. What he was paid for was tent making. But he drew this connection and he goes, ah, okay. So I'm going to tell you, Christian, you're in a market town. You do that like you go through the marketplace, you do that through life. And so Paul, he had this um, this ability 
to go in and just create communities. And we see him doing that all the way throughout Acts. It didn't matter what area you put him in. Paul has strategic thinking. Um, one of the greatest and famous missionaries of all time is a guy named Don Richardson, who wrote a book called The Peace Child. And, and what changed the conversation of missions when that book was written was Don, Don Richardson said, in every culture, in every society and cross-section, there is a gospel in and it's up to the missionary to find that. Well, I think that's part of the Holy Spirit's gifting. So I'll get consulted sometimes from people, church planners. Some of you guys will call me up or email and say, can I talk to you or what have you? I just That's just something I'm gifted at. It's like Pete when he does the consulting for businesses. It's part of my strategy, just like Paul's writing from a distance. It's part of the apostolic gifting. The other thing that the apostle is able to do is he's able to identify gifts. Now, this is different than the prophet because what we're going to talk about next week is the prophet stirs up people's gifts. But the apostle is actually able to identify these gifts. And what makes that so powerful is think of it this way. When you're on your way out, remember that that uh, Paul would identify elders, right? Um, he would teach men who were also able to teach others. So he would he would be able to to see the gifts. And so when I'm planting, I can see spiritual gifts in people that they don't even realize that they have yet. And I it's not because I'm smart. It's not because I'm old, which I'm getting old. Um, but it's because I, I know it's I know it's the spirit. And one of the things I would say that's developed over the years is that um, I have been able to um, notice the presence of things in my life that are not natural patent. So, for example, um, I might suddenly start loving people and I'm like, oh, that's weird. I, I hate these kind of people. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's God. Or I get a shepherd's heart for people and I start to care. And I'm like, oh, that's God. Um, or, you know, um, like I said, this crazy strategy where I get so excited about what that church or that leadership team can do because it's coming from the Lord. It's not coming from me. It's coming through the Holy Spirit, through my gifting. And those things over the years, I've, be, I've realized because I didn't have these things before I started operating apostolically. And, and, and the final thought, I'm going to say this in a minute because I know we got to, we got to sum up here, but, um, the final thing is that what I didn't realize when I started, um, in ministry is that, uh, you don't always start as apostolic. Now, there were always apostolic tendencies in me from the time I got saved. I started a Bible study in the park that, um, all my friends started coming to and people started getting saved and I was leading people to Christ and I was doing things like standing at the entrance to my um, school with tracks, you know, with, I mean, that's nowadays like that's weird, but it was frontline, you know, I was, I was just anything. I would have conversations with people in class. I'd get in trouble because we'd be having this whole like little huddle in the corner of the classroom talking about and debating things and um, the open mic uh, in the gym when the, when the, slideshow broke down in the gym. People started telling inappropriate jokes. I grabbed that mic. You know, there's about 500 students, senior class. I start preaching the gospel. The teachers come up, make me stop after a couple minutes. And that's just the stuff I did. And it, it just, all those tendencies were there. But I started off in ministry being a teacher. And then I went from that to being an evangelist at Lloyd Jones's church. And then I went from there to being a shepherd in a little church in West Wales. Then I went to um, plant that church in a Starbucks and God started developing the apostolic in me. And so one of the things that, that I always say about apostles is that they have the other gifts in them, in the bud. And we mentioned this earlier on our, our jump school call that, um, you know, uh, it's like a one man band. You know, he doesn't, um, you would never buy the CD for a one man band, but you're kind of impressed when you first see him. He can, he can play all the instruments. He can at least carry the tune and you can make out the song. That's an apostle in the beginning. 
um, he's able to do things. Um, he's the only guy in that mix that can survive by himself for a time. And it's kind of designed that way. But then he identifies the gifts and raises up the other leaders and the other parts of the team pretty quick. So that's uh, that's kind of it. And uh, yeah. So if you want to um, feed into that, Peter, no, I just kind of <laughs> dominated that. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I'm glad that you, you brought that up, Peyton, because I'd really like to talk about uh, the apostolic calling that, uh, that, you know, some people experience and, uh, no, and also per- perhaps the, going. <laughs> perhaps the, the prophetic calling that, that others, uh, you know, have the, the gift, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Pete, it's it's funny that you bring that up because it is true <laughs> that when you have this division, um, you'll find that some some of the leaders aren't particularly good at certain certain roles that they might find themselves in the church. Like, for example, accounting. <laughs> <laughs> well, which one of the gifts would the accountant have? The bookkeeper, the teacher. All the way, man. Pencil neck, nerdy. You know, I'm thinking about yeah. Refuge Long Beach's teacher, and I would say no to that. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, that's a shout out to my boy Chris Lang. I'm one of the best teachers on the planet. Exactly, and Refuge I wouldn't say Long that that necessarily means bookkeeper. Although he is, he although he is an engineer. I was only teasing. I was just having fun with the teachers out there. Um, funny thing is, is. Uh, you, you know, you never know, but, but here's the deal. You don't really have time to wait on tables. You do need help doing that stuff. And for that reason, they're a simplified church. What? Um, and what do they do for you at simplified church? Simplified church takes care of all your bookkeeping, accounting, and tax reporting needs. And, uh, if you don't want to do all that kind of stuff, which, there's something wrong with you if you do. That is not what you got into ministry for. And I know there's a church accountant or church exec going, hey, I love my job and I glorify the Lord doing it. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I wish you went to my church. <laughs> <laughs> but for those of you that don't have people like him, there's SimplifyChurch.com. Well, that's about it for us today. <laughs> guys it's uh it's been our pleasure to do this podcast but we already did jump school this morning (laughs) the band of brothers call and we had some funny stuff in that and i I feel like you're getting the leftovers i really do so if you want to get the good stuff you got to join jumpschooltraining.com and then you get the really good smack talk on that it was like you could tell we really should have done this podcast first i even said to you This Mac talk was so good. It should go on our podcast. Yeah. If it wasn't for the fact that we did that on a conference call line, as opposed to our typical Skype setup, I probably would have included it, but the conference line sounds so much worse recorded. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Well, to see what the Butler saw, you'll have to join jump school. Pete, how do they join jump school? If they do want to join jump school, they could head on over to jumpschooltraining.com and watch the little video we got there. And I think we got a, a uh, reduced price trial or something like that. Uh, it's been so long since I've been over there. I'd have to go look at it again. Yeah. If you, um, if you do check that out, you become a special part of our posse, which means that you join us for a monthly call where you get to ask us anything you want. You can interact call goes long as long as it needs to. You get jump school, uh, the book, which is a tome on church planning. <laughs> yeah. I was just chatting. You got to come up with a new name. Uh, let's I let's do. just stick to that as the dossier. <laughs> the dossier, which, uh, by the way, is what Church Zero came out of. Many people don't realize it was the same book to start, and uh, I had to cut it in two. But the big chunk of the how-to church plant stuff, the good stuff, the nectar of church planning is in that. We've got audios on there. We've got... Um, even something called rations, which is something we added at the end of 2016. Jump school field rations. Oh, oh yeah. Each. Yeah, we got that added. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Travis, uh, Travis please, p- please note, uh, add rations to website. <laughs> Siri. <laughs> <laughs> so our field rations are every month we give you examples of um, specific things that planners have done that uh, – 
you know, might be good for outreaches. It's literally things you can print off, use, you can customize. It's forms. It's stuff. It's all the stuff you're like, does anyone have any forms they can send me? All that stuff is in there. And there's just so much more. Jump school is packed to the gills. I would say, Pete, in many ways, it's more than a guy could probably go through in a month. But we call it jump school because everything you need to survive is in there. That's right. And uh, you want to know more about that? Head on over to jumpschooltraining.com. All right, guys. Well, this has been Pete Mitchell and Peyton Jones on the Church Planner Podcast reminding you, if you want to reach the ones nobody's reaching, you need to go where nobody's going and do what nobody's doing. Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Church Planner Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Peyton Jones. We'd love to hear your comments on this episode of the Church Planner Podcast. Visit us online and let us know what you thought at churchplannerpodcast.com. If you subscribe to us via iTunes and have enjoyed the podcast, leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive in iTunes, the more iTunes will promote us to other church planners who would benefit from this show. This podcast is brought to you by the Church Planner Magazine, which is available in the iTunes newsstand or online via churchplannermagazine.com. dot